Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna continue working through the Anomaly Lab here on Hack Smarter. Now, if you missed the previous parts, I recommend watching those first. We're gonna dive right in where we left off in the previous video. So if you do feel lost, make sure you watch parts one, part two, and part three first. One cool thing about Anomaly, if this is your first introduction to it, is it's a multi-machine lab. And I'll just show this to you real quick before we dive into things. So if you jump over to Anomaly, you can see that there's actually two machines that are part of the lab. We have compromised the public facing web server, and now we are working on pivoting into the domain controller. So I'm not gonna recap everything I've done. You can go ahead and watch the previous parts for that, but we're gonna pick up right where we left off in the previous video. And in the previous video, we were able to pull down this KRB5 key tab that belongs to I believe Brandon Boyd, and you can see it in our notes here. We tried to use that key tab extract. We couldn't get NTLM hashes, but we were able to get information about who the key tab belonged to. Now, if you understand Kerberos and Kerberos authentication and how it connects to Linux, you know that we can use a tool called Kinit in order to authenticate to this. And let me just get this pulled up right here. We'll go over uh, to this. So we have our KRB5 key tab. If you didn't know how to do it though, Google is your friend here. Let me just open up a new tab and we'll type like how to use KRB5 key tab on Linux. I don't know if that will actually uh, be helpful to us, but we will find out. Uh, there are things that you have to install, although it should already be installed, I think, on Kali Linux. We'll see if we run into an issue with it. But you can do a little bit of reading on it if you want to. Otherwise, I'll show you real quick how we can do this. Let me jump over to our terminal, make sure I'm not missing anything in chat. I also completely forgot to say, uh, if you guys notice above me, if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, you will see live chat happening. I make most of these videos while I am live streaming and I live stream pretty often. So if you've never joined me for a live stream, you are missing out. Make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell notification so that you are notified the next time I am live. But all those people are in the live studio audience. We have almost 70 people hanging out for the live, I guess, recording of this show. So, hey, make sure you join for the next live stream. We'd love to properly welcome you there. But there's a few files that we need and I think I grabbed the output of one of them up above, and that is the KRB5 configuration file. So we are likely gonna have to replace our current configuration file or at least modify it so it matches this, so that we can then do Kerberos authentication. So let's do that first, and we'll see what it looks like. If I cat out Etsy uh, KRB, uh, what's the file called? It's krb5.conf, right? Why is it not coming up? I don't even have it on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make one. I must have never used Kerberos authentication on this Kali VM, but I believe we can just make the file. So we'll do sudo nano etsy krb5.configuration. I'm sure I'm doing this wrong, but we'll eventually figure it out together. And I'm just gonna copy this one from the machine and paste it in. I also need to make sure my Etsy host matches that. So here on our Etsy host, we wanna make sure we have any of the domains, which I believe the domain was just anomaly.hacksmarter, and then the fully qualified name of the domain controller, I believe was anomaly-dc. Let's double check that to make sure our configuration file has everything on our Etsy host. So I see the anomaly DC, and we have the match right there. You just wanna make sure it matches your target IP as well, which we can see right there and we have anomaly.hacksmarter, and we have anomaly.hacksmarter. So I think that side of things should be good to go, I hope. Then we can go ahead and clear LSLA. You can see we have our KRB5 key tab file there, which of course belongs to Brandon Boyd. And I think we can authenticate. Oh, is, is K in it really not installed by default? on Kali Linux, I guess it isn't. So we'll go ahead and get that installed. We might have to do, I don't remember what package it comes in. I don't think you can sudo apt install K in it. I think you have to install, K oh, I'm wrong. Maybe you can, or I'm installing the wrong thing. Let's find out together. <laughs> I could have swore that it was like KRB5 
user or something library that you need to download and utilize for K in it. So I'm probably just downloading like uh, a, a crypto miner to my Kali machine, but that's okay. I think even the AI overview pay, maybe told us that. Yeah, KRB5 user. That's what I was thinking you need to install in order to use K in it. I don't know what, what I just installed, guys. We're just going to stop it because, oh, I can't stop it. There. We'll try installing KRB5 user because I'm pretty sure that's what we need. Oh, no. Where is our right here? So we want to kill this. Don't do what I'm doing, guys. Obviously, 20632. Oh, there's no process. Okay, it is locked. It is held. Oh, that by that process. Let me kill the app process. 38857. <laughs> The beauty of doing it live, ladies and gentlemen. Mistakes get included. All right, default Kerberos, that will be good. That's pulling it from our Etsy Kerberos config thingy that we already set up. So we're going to say that's good. And uh, I think we can enter that all this blank. All right, let's see what I'm doing wrong. Let's see what's going to break. We'll probably spend the entire video troubleshooting why I don't know how to use Kerberos authentication from Linux. Yes, we'll restart. Okay. Is K in it installed now? It is. All right. One one challenge is complete. We have K in it installed. And with K in it, I think uh it's dash uh let's see, look at dash H real quick. So I think we want to do use key tab file and and then we can specify the key tab file. Okay. So we'll do dash uh, KT and we'll specify the key tab file. And I think it was Brandon Boyd, right? Brandon Boyd right there. Okay, so we'll do Brandon Boyd and then we have to specify the domain of anomaly.hacksmarter. If this works, I'll actually be impressed. I'm sure I did something wrong. Okay. Cannot contact any KDC for realm anomaly.hsm while getting initial credentials. That's cool. Hmm. What did I do wrong here? I clearly did something wrong. I'm just not sure what I did wrong. But what if I do this? Contains no suitable keys for host Kali while getting initial connection, okay? Because it's not for host Kali. Cannot contact any KDC for realm anomaly HSM while getting initial credentials. Oh, I know what I did wrong. It's my Etsy host file. Guys, remember we have two different machines here. I set anomaly HSM and stuff as the IP for the web server. That needs to be the IP for the domain controller, not the web server. That's the issue. So remember when I set this, I forgot myself that it's a multi-machine chain. And so it's trying to authenticate the Kerberos on the Ubuntu server, which obviously that's not going to work. I'm about 99% certain that's my error. Let's find out. <laughs> took me a second, took me a while, but I realized what I did wrong. Now, if we do K list, you can actually see that we have the ticket there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this and add it to my notes that we were able to authenticate. And I'll also add a note. Uh, one mistake I made is I forgot to update Etsy host. So it was pointing to the DC. Once I did that, this command worked. Okay, there we go. So we were able to run K in it. And then when we run K list, you can see that we have the ticket loaded in there. Now, if we, I think, 
do ls. Can we, we see our file right here. So we need to export this as an environment variable. So let's go ahead and do that. I think it's export KRB, uh, KRB 5CC name potentially to export it as an environment variable. So then we can use it for Kerberos authentication. KRB 5CC name. I think I did that right. Here's the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure I messed up like three different things. But if we did it all correctly, we should be able to use NetExec now with like LDAP and authenticate as Brandon Boyd. Let's see if I am right. So if we do NetExec LDAP anomaly smarter dash u uh, Brandon Boyd uh, dash k and I think use kcash. I don't know. It's like paused. It's not doing anything. Is it going to work? And it did. We actually did it correctly. Amazing. All right. Let's add all of these steps to our notes so we don't forget. We'll jump over to this here and we will say, um, I'm gonna do an H1. And we will say initial access to the domain controller. And we'll drop that in there. We were able to export that as an environment variable, and then we're able to use LDAP in order to authenticate. Now there's a few different things that we could do here. The one thing I always like to do is to get the bloodhound loot. If you've never heard of bloodhound, bloodhound is a tool for mapping out via graph theory, different attack chains in Active Directory. So we can see, hey, maybe this user can reset this user's password or this user is in this group. And it just makes enumeration a lot easier. So that's one thing that we could do and I'm likely gonna do it. But the other thing I'd like to do is just dump all of the users. You would be surprised how often on real engagements that a user's password is stored in the description of the user in Active Directory. This often happens if they have a default password or it's a shared account. Actually, just recently on an internal pen test, I dumped all of the users in AD and I was able to compromise an IT service account because they put the password for the service account in the description because they, I guess that's how they shared their password. I have no idea. But I actually do see that in the real world occasionally. And I think we can do that with dash dash users with LDAP maybe and I am right. And look at that. Would you just look at it? We have the clear text password. It looks like for Brandon Boyd being stored in the description. So just like I said, I've seen in the real world, let's go ahead and grab this and that will make our life a little bit easier. So we don't have to work with the key tab and I'll just like say dumping users. Uh, how does the hack smart description work with the all? Yeah, all access gives you access to everything. Every single course, every single hack with me, every single lab, you don't have to pay anything else. It is the best value by far. But okay, here we go. We have our user, Brandon Boyd. And I do want to confirm, whoops, I did not want to link it. I do want to confirm that these credentials are actually valid. So let's try that first. I'm going to go to netexec smb anomaly.hsm-u Brandon Boyd slash p and we'll grab his password from the output here. Like so, and we'll just see like, can he read any shares on the domain controller? And he is able to read a few shares, nothing actually interesting, but this does confirm that we have fully compromised the Brandon Boyd user. So after three different parts, it took us to compromise the domain or not the domain controller, the public facing web server. We successfully pivoted to the domain controller and we have compromised Brandon Boyd. So I'm gonna do an H2 and I will say full compromise of Brandon Boyd. Boyd, this is going to give us a really good foothold into the AD environment. So then we could do things like Bloodhound and enumerate our permissions and just continue to dig a little bit deeper. But I am looking over at the time. As usual, I think this is a really good natural stopping point. 
And so for those of you in the live stream, you guys hang on, we're not done live streaming. But for those of you watching this video after the fact, I want to give you a challenge. If you don't have a sub to hack smarter, well, you should have one. So go sub to hack smarter, and then open up this lab on your own. I have showed you every step that you need to get initial access to the Active Directory environment, but I want you to try enumerating on your own. So you have Brandon Boyd's credentials. I showed you how to authenticate with NetExec. See what you can do next. See if you can figure out how to run Bloodhound, collect the loot, load it into Bloodhound, and begin mapping out different attack paths in the AD environment. Give it a shot on your own first. If you get stuck, that's okay. Then you can join me in the next video and we will do it together. But have fun and happy hacking.